Alright, today finally we guys gonna live up to our rated R for Russian type video. I'm gonna show you how I installed these Jeep headlights into my 2001 Montero XLS because one of my lenses was all cracked and it's gonna be very Russian. So if you're a Karen type of person and you know, keep your opinions to yourself. Don't post them anyways because YouTube algorithm doesn't care if it's bad comments, good comments, it's all, it's all good publicity. So let's see how that happened. Alright, the Montero is all looking good, parked out there in the shade, looking pretty, but look what we got over here. Alright, but never mind, I probably shouldn't do that on tape, watch too many criminal minds. I gotta say, some of this Montero experience can be a little bit annoying at times, but it is a lot of fun. Messing around with it, I think I just haven't done it all my life. Oh, look at that. Hell yeah. Let's go bring it over. What's up, buddy? Oh, look at that. That would be badass. All right, we're going to go. I think I'm going to go pull the Montero over by the garage, pop the door, and try to plug these in and see if they work, because that's kind of our next deciding factor, eh? Let's hope, fingers crossed, this will work. All right. I don't know if you can see, but they do work. Hell yeah, so it's a direct, just straight up plug-in. Oh man, let me try to do the, the brights on, see how that looks. Uh, and that's, that's with the brights on, so all of them on. Damn, that's exciting as hell. Just goes right in, and that is direct connection. And I have these two, which I'm not sure what they are. I'll see if this thing has instructions or something. Which I don't think this does. We'll figure it out. I mean, I got friends who know more about cars, way more than I do, so. But, first step, we're in business. And the eBay just got the regular headlights back in stock for like 170 bucks. But at this point, I'm pretty sure we're committed, so we might as well finish this. Alright, so this is what's happening with my, my headlight. It's all cracked. And it's 40 bucks just to replace this one lens, so for 45, we're gonna be testing these Jeep headlights. Alright, so it's substantial. It's much darker now, basically. Why can't I say substantially, but let's try it. I can't really barely see the Montero here. All right, let's be there, let there be light. I mean, it's significantly brighter. I'm not sure is the adjustment. I thought this knob was like an adjuster for, you know, up down. But it's just nothing really. It's some kind of a thing. Let me pull it off. It's just like a dust cap of some sort. I'm not sure what it does. So I gotta figure that out. We'll do some kind of something to adjust this with. But live and learn, we'll figure it out. Alright, so there's a Ontario. There's a scientific measurings. My genius flawless plan has a flaw. It's really bright out, so I can't see anything. So I can't test the throw. The good part is that this house in here is adjustable. However, I can't tell where it is. The good news is since I'm learning on that and I'm gonna video for you guys how to take this headlight apart. Fortunately, this one is still together, so that means I can pull this in the garage, be able to figure out the throws. So it might be even slightly off, but at least level-wise it'll be pretty close, because we'll want this one a little lower than that one. In the garage we can see just fine, so this one obviously is a little bit lower, which I actually don't think I'll mind too much. I'm gonna play around with the adjustment and see how high we can get, so I'll tape that one off and then leave this one alone. I'm gonna use a French technique called idiotique where normally you'd go put it in the oven, but I have to admit a thing, I've never used an oven in my life, and ours is kind of acting up, so... But we're just gonna heat gun it around and slowly pry it apart. Obviously it worked, because I took the other one apart. It's just much slower, but it's sunny and kind of nice, so we'll just go ahead and do it. Russian style, you know, questionable ways. So I just kept prying my screwdriver like from the corner. You can see like I bent 
like here a little bit and so I kind of just squeeze it in between as I heat it up and the glue let's turn it on and you can see what the glue does so what I did actually in the first one when I was doing it I put scooped some of that glue off from the corner and so I got it and then all I did was just turned on the heat gun and just saw what it was doing and it basically like liquefies it after a while and so you're gonna get used to but after 20 seconds or so it becomes very gooey so or you can just do it right and do it with the oven but here I am so let's finish this off take this apart and start chopping it up hard part about this assembly here other than if you're doing the whole heat gun and thing is once you unscrew these two bolts which are the adjustment bolts this one sits pretty tightly it's like a ball and socket fitment so once you loosen it you're gonna have to yank and that's a bit sketch because I don't want to all break all this plastic and whatnot but so far I got it out in and out twice and haven't broken anything it's just a bit awkward so let's finish unscrewing it and pop it out all right, so this part is so far the most, not the hardest, but the trickiest. You have to fit the projector into the lens. And then kind of try to figure out where it goes. So you'll need to kind of ballpark it. I used the back plate here, and so we can kind of eyeball. We can, I mean, I guess you can use a ruler and kind of mark it pretty dead on here. And then kind of eyeballing where that vertical line would go down here. So all I did on the first one was kind of like aim it so forth and kind of cut a line and then slide it in and then I was just eyeballing it back and forth. Now, because I've already done it, I just butted these up exactly and then traced the line. So I'm, kind of, I'm gonna cut a slightly smaller hole down low and I'll trim it at the top a bit and then we'll fit it in and see kind of how it goes. All right, so that's a start. It does make quite a bit of white mess, white powder, so you do end up looking a bit like Tony Montana over here. But then we just brush all this dirt off and then we'll test the headlight. I'm gonna go reposition the camera too because it's kind of janky and probably move the table so I don't make too much of this dust fly inside here. And I think that's it. It's pretty sturdy, doesn't wobble. So then what I'm gonna do now is the holes that you can see there's one there. One should be dead underneath. Let's see. It's right there. So I'm gonna mock them up drill the hole through plastic and feed a screw through it to hold it in place and then the last bolt it's kind of free floating on the back end over here so let me fit the other two bolts in and then I'll kind of show you what I'm gonna do for now. So I kind of test fitted this guy we can see that this is not parallel to the back side and that's kind of my eyeball method here whereas this one you know that's pretty close and so we do have a range of a fairly wide range of adjustment on the back with the two screws on the pivot point so I'm gonna go ahead and lop off here and so I'm not gonna videotape this part I'm just gonna be going back and forth making sure it looks kind of right and then once that's done so this screw will obviously have to move back a little bit more that's why I should have probably checked first but as you can see I got a couple screw holes here and these are my ventilation holes and we're gonna lop off that back as well so this way this high, uh, headlamp can have air circulation and technically there's pretty big gaps on each side so we should have fresh air coming in and we'll have somewhere to go so I think they'll be fine and cool. Alright so this part I'm, I haven't started painting yet but I want to see just so that in my mind I can come up with the next plan of action but this is the cracked lens there it is you can see all the massive amount of cracks on it so in the photos that I found on the internet the guys I think cut out this bit and just chopped it out and then this was all gone but I want to see if it's doable to cut the lens out but save the frame because the frame does have screws mounting screws for the backing plate over here and also when you put this into the truck that would have been funny if it fell and cracked just on me now but when you fit this in 
in the pictures you can see the guys having a bit of a crack down low here. Pretty decent clean job as far as and I was uh, I didn't know if it can be cleaned up with a sander. So I tested this one first so I don't have to videotape it for you guys and now we can go ahead and I'll show you how it's done. But that part is pretty pain in the ass, I'm not gonna lie. This is the cutoff discs I'm using, so I'm using this little guy to clean up some of the corners and then this is the one that came with the kit, it's like a middle out of a bunch of cutoff discs. I bought it to cut the bumpers off but I never used it, so finally we got it. And then, and this is just 180 grit um, to clean up all this stuff. So one thing I noticed when cutting off things like that and whatnot, just take your time. That's why I stopped yesterday, and even now I'm like finding myself like dropping this too soon and almost like my fingers are not too far away. So usually on days like that, whenever I'm starting to notice that I'm losing concentration, then I just stop, and that's how I still have no accidentes and fingers crossed we'll keep it that way. But let's go check outside on the ribs. Right, let's see what cooked up while I was messing around in the garage. Squirrels everywhere. All right, not bad, not bad at all. Some chicken skin, tasty. Mm. Oh, bones are showing, so hope you guys had a great Thanksgiving. And I'm gonna pick this up in the morning and hope, fingers crossed, we're gonna finish this headlights project. There's carrots and some potatoes. We're gonna squeeze these out and make potato water. That's how you do it, right? But just for reference point, this is the kind of stuff that I do with my jigsaw. So dremeling, tight lines and so forth wasn't too too bad, but if you're not used to it, it'll probably be pretty tricky. Though that's where I started, and that's where we are. So it's doable. I don't know how DIY, easily DIY that cutoff that I just did is, but Try it if you want to. I'm not gonna videotape this, but we're just gonna spray some isopropyl alcohol over all of it, wipe it down, and then I'll go ahead and go outside and paint it. We'll go ahead and flash the dip them. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and paint these. I taped off the corners. I cut it all with the little razor blade. So we're gonna paint these from the inside and outside. I decided to go with the regular paint because the plastic dip is running the risk of peeling up when I'm gonna take off the tape. Whereas this should be okay, so let's do that. All right, so I put them all together. It's been about a month, it's taken some time. December usually is a busy time, so nothing fall out. It hasn't been like the Glenn's Eye yet in The Walking Dead. I haven't gone off-road on them to really shake them down, but overall they've held up way, uh, well. No, no looseness, everything is nice and tight. Looks pretty good. It looks like I smoked the side mirrors or side reflectors, but I'm not. It's just the because it's murdered out behind now, they look kind of darker. So I'm almost thinking of like putting a light tint onto the bottom over here. Uh, I'm gonna pop the hood real quick and you'll see what I did from the top. Back together, I scraped most of the glue from behind just because I didn't really need it. I mean, I'm not trying to protect it from fogging up because there's nothing to fog up. So I put a couple of screws, one from the top and there's another one from the bottom, pretty low key. I haven't connected the side markers yet or the the DRLs yet just because we'll do that later this year as you can see I took the the fog lights out for now because I'm thinking of making the bull bar and I'm not sold on the I might just drill into the bumper for now and kind of go from there but anyways yeah it came out good for forty five dollars it's well worth it I mean yes after I started this project the new headlights became available online but at that point it was too late and everybody keeps asking how I did it so here we go if I was to do this again I probably would have used these I ordered them kind of after the fact and by the time they showed up I was already deep into the cuttings so 
what I would do in retrospect. I probably would have figured how to fit these in because you can see like the brackets go flat but you can bend them back pretty easy so it would have been not too bad to push it inside the housing and run the screw from like inside through or even possibly a bolt through it and then just tighten it up. So that might have not been the worst idea in the world. And I might in retrospect do it because it'll actually push like the headlight a little more out. As you can see, it's pretty visible. And I like that I can see the entire of the DRL around because in one of the photos I've seen, it's kind of hidden and sunken in. And I did break something, I will fess up to it. So I, one of the days I was running a little late and I was like, oh, I should probably not do this today. And I decided to, a little bit aggressively popped that housing out and I cracked it so then I had to epoxy the hell out of it but overall it's nice and clean the only kind of janky thing you can see is that there's that wire that I was talking about that I used to hang all my signs from you can't really see it here because it's way deep um, but overall I'm quite happy with it we'll see off-roading wise how it'll hold up I'll probably mention some future videos and we'll kind of see but so far so good and Next up we will be talking about the muffler because I finally get, got rid of that and my cat. But I got a bit of an exhaust leak from the new Y pipe with the new cats there. And we installed that was a pain in the butt so I got to take it to the shop. Let's see the throw. And then the brights. So they're a bit brighter than the stocks. And it seems like the throw is pretty okay. I think. I think this headlight is a little bit turned in, so I might fix around with that. But it seems all right, it works pretty well. Uh, nobody flashed me yet. So, works all right. For $45, I'm quite happy with it. And I don't know if it was like a daily, daily where I'd be driving a lot, especially at night, something to consider, but for now, it's not too, too bad. Listen to that, mmm. Yeah, not a good sound. So we'll fix the noise and then we'll have a video of Montero gets new muffler. So I parked back at my house. Let's see it on a neighbor's house. So you can see like this is the two lights from this one and the other two are kind of coming in a little bit. So I think I need to pull that headlight out a tad. And there's the brights. So it works, I can see. And I'm quite happy with that. It's good enough for now. Can't really see the truck itself, but see the lights. But anyways, hopefully that helps. If you got any questions, just ask away and I'll help. But this is the Russian version of doing the Jeep headlights in the 2001. Great success and I'll see you next time.